Hi, I'm Steve Adubato, and this segment kicks off a really interesting, compelling series we're starting. It is simply called New Jersey Leaders Who Matter, Powering Equity and Social Justice. You'll see the Chiron out throughout this segment. We kick it off with our good friend and colleague, Rick Thigpen, the Senior Vice President of Corporate Citizenship at PSEG. Good to see you, Rick. Good morning, Steve. Nice to see you. And people say, well, what is Thigpen doing on this segment? Are we talking energy? No, not today. But we've had Rick on. Actually, we had Rick when we did a special on Drum Thwacket, which is, by the way, check out our website, steveautobato.org. He's a historian. He looks at history, people who matter, not just in New Jersey, but nationally. And we kick off this particular segment with three people we're going to look at, Rick. One is former Congresswoman and Ambassador Millicent Fenwick, the late Millicent Fenwick, uh, United States Senator Robert Menendez, and the late Reverend Samuel Howard Woodson, Jr., who was the first African-American Speaker of the House, Speaker of the Assembly of New Jersey. Ready to start with Millicent Fenwick? So, Steve, let me first say it's really a privilege for public service to be involved in talking about equity and social justice in New Jersey. It's going to make our future brighter, and it's going to remind everybody that our future will be brighter together. So we're very happy to do this, and it's a great topic. And no better way to talk about it than to show the excellence that exists in New Jersey and the diverse backgrounds it comes from. And by the way, PSEG, big supporter of public broadcasting. Just get that out of the way. Hey, Millicent Fenwick served uh, in Congress. Uh, there was a Doonesbury cartoon about her. She was Lacey Davenport. She smoked the pipe, which she actually did. But she's a lot more than that. Talk about it, Rick. Well, she's amazing, Steve. And she had over 50 years of her life in public service. She finally got elected to Congress in her 60s. She started, I, I believe, in the Bernardsville Borough Council. And that's really the place that you think about when you talk about equity and social justice. 60 Minutes called her an elegant patrician. And it's really fantastic that a woman from that background, the Somerset Hills, did so much to advance the cause of equity and social justice during her career. Very impressive career from running for, you know, she got elected to Congress. She beat an assemblyman named Tom Kane to fill a that seat vacated by a guy named Peter Freelingheisen. Wow. So with that, you know, excellence comes some amazing political stories. Truly an outstanding public servant to come, you know, a member of the Republican Party comes from the sort of affluent area of the Somerset Hills, had quite a background herself. Her father was appointed ambassador to Spain by Calvin Coolidge, hardly from that, you know, hard scrabble background. But she developed a real fondness for equity and social justice and human rights during her career. Apparently, it was the behavior of the Nazis, the persecution of Jews that really turned her on. But even in the 1940s, she became a member of the NAACP. She was a supporter of the Equal Rights Amendment. She was a supporter of human rights. She was a supporter of the food stamp program. And I really have an outstanding quote from her that I really think captures her. And I just want to read it to you very briefly. I think about my town, my district, my state, my country, and my planet. And then I think we're all in this together. And somehow, we've got to try to work out a just and peaceful society. The wisdom, the grace, the commitment to caring about people is just outstanding. And it's a reminder to everybody that you can come from the Somerset Hills, you can come from a privileged background, you can have great experiences, and you can still be a leader in the area of social justice. And by the way, before we move on, um, we show a real quick clip of Millicent Fenwick to bring her to life, if you will. She was considered the conscience of Congress, also in the Nixon impeachment proceedings, a Republican, Republican president. She stood up. Let's just say things have changed. Let's take a quick look at Millicent Fenwick before we move on. This is Millicent, Millicent Fenwick, Steve Adubato, a much younger version, 1991. Let's talk about this Tom Kane fight yeah. with Millicent Tom Fenwick. was so nice. He was a know. young assemblyman. He was speaker. He was speaker of the House. And young and, and awfully nice and a friend. In a Republican and the, primary. Yeah. I said, if you win, uh, which you probably will, uh, next Tuesday, count on me. I'll be quiet if you don't want me to speak. I'll speak if you want speeches. I'll contribute time or uh, a support, because this is really the way politics ought to be. So there it is, Rick. That was Millicent Fenwick. You ready to move on to Bob Menendez, who is a current member of Congress, was a United States representative, was a state senator, but now the senior United States senator in New Jersey. But he matters. Talk about him. 
Well, he more than matters. He's he's a gentleman we all know in New Jersey, and we forget just how dynamic and how amazing his accomplishments are. And we start with the fundamentals. Bob is a child of Cuban immigrants. He comes from a very tough background. Union City was his home. He was elected to the school board at 19. He was elected mayor of Union City as a young man. He was the first Hispanic to be elected to the New Jersey General Assembly. He was the first Hispanic to be elected to the New Jersey State Senate. After congressional redistricting and the Voting Rights Act belongs in the conversation, he was the first Hispanic to be elected to the United States House of Representatives from New Jersey. After that, he became the first Hispanic to serve in the United States Senate. He's our first, Rick, a lot of firsts. And one more, he is the first Hispanic to chair the very powerful United States Senate Foreign Relations Committee. So Bob's just an outstanding man who's created some excellence. And we take it for granted because we see him all the time. But he's worthy of mentioning, and we should not forget, he is the child of immigrants as we go through the debates you hear in the public today. But remember, he was 19 years of age when we ran. he ran for the school board in, in Union City, was it? Yes, sir. And then he stood up against the machine, the Democratic Party machine, and I believe he was wearing a, a bulletproof vest because it was a rough time, there was a lot of violence involved, and he was testifying against them in criminal proceedings. Do I have that right, Rick? Yes. Like Millicent family passed through her own challenges running against Tom Kane for Congress and the drama that went with that, Bob Menendez had quite a lot of drama in taking on the machine in Union City. And he ran for mayor once and was unsuccessful. He ran again and he won. And he faced danger to get where he is. And it just reminds me of one of those great quotes. He had to pass himself through the valley of the shadow of death to get where he is today. And what a place where he is today. It's just amazing to, to see where Bob Menendez is right now. Rick, why don't I keep talking about first, but this last person is the Reverend, the late former Speaker of the New Jersey State Assembly, the first African-American to serve as the Speaker of the House in New Jersey, Howard Woodson, Jr. Talk about him, Rick. Another outstanding New Jerseyan, an African-American, the pastor of Shiloh Baptist Church in Trenton, known as an eloquent speaker, a man of the people, a public servant for years, both a Trenton City Councilman, president of the NAACP State Conference, the Assembly Minority Leader in 1968. He, he had his own political challenges becoming Assembly Speaker. But he was not just the only, not just the first Assembly Speaker from New Jersey who was African American. We believe he was the first presiding officer of any house in the United States since Reconstruction. So Pastor Woodson nation, is the Rick? model of, in the entire nation, Pastor Woodson. He Can't is the go. model of excellence as a pastor preacher. And he's kind of the Adam Clayton Powell of New Jersey, we call him. The former great and congressman from, speaker, from Harlem. From Harlem, yes, right. who was the longtime chair of the powerful Education and Labor Committee. He was the assembly speaker after Robinson versus Cahill, this, the school funding uh, case. So under his speakership, they passed a new school funding formula under the under the governor, under Governor Brendan Byrne, and they financed it by passing the first state income tax. Wow. Pastor Woodson is a classic example of a pastor preacher, a dutiful public servant. Brendan Byrne eventually uh, appointed him to be uh, chair of the Civil Service Commission in New Jersey, which gave him responsibility for affirmative action programs and equal employment opportunity programs. He made a great impact. He is the origin of the sort of the seat in Congress held by Bonnie Watson Coleman, the first African-American female in the state. Her father and Howard Woodson were great friends. Assemblyman John Watson and Pastor Howard Woodson were great friends, and they did a lot for Trenton and Mercer County politics. But yet another outstanding New Jerseyan who made a great impact on our state, and this one was African-American. So having a sort of a elegant patrician from Somerset County, Bedminster no less, a Cuban immigrant from Union City, and an African-American from Trenton, it's just a reminder, Steve, that excellence comes in all shapes and sizes and genders, and that equity and social justice is what's going to make us great together, because excellence is about all different types of people. Before, Rick, before I let you go, um, and Rick will be joining us along with a whole range of historians and academics and scholars who understand um, important leaders 
again, it will be mostly New Jersey leaders who have made a difference powering equity and social justice. But we'll have some national people as well, including um, Dr. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, so many others. But it'll be New Jersey-centric. But, Rick, final words. Why is a series like this so important as we kick it off with three, the, these three extraordinarily important individuals? Because our future is together, Steve, and these people with different backgrounds have all shown outstanding accomplishments in their own world. And I just want to mention two other quick names. One is the son of Polish and Russian immigrants. His name is Frank Lautenberg, the first Jewish statewide elected official in New Jersey. And the other one is a gentleman who I consider a second father to myself, and that is Donald Payne, another African-American, the first African-American to be elected to the House of Representatives in New Jersey. So by showing excellence from all backgrounds, Steve, we hope that people can embrace a future where we all have a place together because we all want to see excellence in our future. Hey, Rick Thigpen. This came from a conversation Rick and I were brainstorming a few months ago and said, hey, what about if we did this and featured all kinds of different people? And I know it looks like, hey, well, we could just talk about all kinds of people and it would be regular programming. No, we wanted to give this a name and a brand, and that's what we're doing. Hey, Rick, thanks for kicking it off with us. Steve, I hope it catches fire. I hope everybody begins to talk about how excellence comes in all shapes and sizes. And there's great examples of it all across our state. And I look forward to you identifying some of those great examples. Because as the late Congresswoman and Ambassador Millicent Fenwick said in that clip, as Rick said as well, we are on this together. Thanks, Rick. I'm Steve Adubato. That's Rick. Conscience Big of the Congress. That's right. The Conscience of Congress. We'll be right back. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by the Turrell Fund, supporting Reimagine Child Care, PNC, Grow Up Great, IBEW Local 102, Summit Health, NJM Insurance Group, Rowan University, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, Delta Dental of New Jersey, and by the Adler Aphasia Center. Promotional support provided by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and by Insider NJ. I'm Tim Sullivan, CEO of the New Jersey Economic Development Authority. Since joining the NJEDA, I've been struck by the incredible assets and resources that New Jersey has to offer. The NJEDA is working every day to grow New Jersey's economy in a way that maximizes the values of those assets to benefit every single New Jersey resident. This includes more support for small businesses and a focus on reclaiming New Jersey's position as a leader in the innovation economy. Visit NJEDA.com to learn more about how NJEDA is building a stronger and fairer New Jersey economy.